Hello, I'm John Kress, the head basketball coach at the College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. Our presentation today will show and teach how to beat the zone defense once it has set up. Of course, if you can beat the zone down the court before it has established via the fast break, I recommend always doing so because you can get many high percentage shots on the outside, on the inside, possible tip-ins. So many times our big people uh, on defense who have to go 94 feet from the offensive end to the defensive end have a tough time running the floor, getting back to the back line of the zone, whether they have to play the corner, the block, or possibly the middle. I believe there's a trend in both high school and college basketball uh, after the uh, last couple of years to use, I believe, more zone defense. Why? Because we have so many great one-on-one -on -one players who really penetrate much better against man-to-man -man than against zones. And believe it or not, the shooting percentages have gone down some from the outside over the last couple of years. So there is a trend to playing more zone. I'll address, though, today what has been successful for us over the years once that zone is established. There are 12 basic concepts that are very, very important that we have to talk about and show. The first is the ability to recognize the zone. What type is it? Is it a 2-3, a 1-3-1, a 3-2, some type of combination zone, whether it be a box in one, a triangle in two, a matchup zone. Recognize that some zones have gaps in them or seams. Some zones have defenders who can be screened or a little lazy. So recognize those aspects also. Nextly, let's talk about a concept, the poise, patience, payoff. Some zones start tough and stay tough. Some zones begin with playing some real good defense for those first five or six passes, but then let up. We need to have patience to exploit the zone and do well in that concept. Now we talk about the inside-outside theory, keeping the big people happy, getting the ball inside effectively. So many times when we get the ball inside, it can go from a low post outside to a perimeter player for the open J, and we draw fouls guy by going inside. I think more games have been won and lost with the inside-outside theory than any other theory in the history of the game of basketball. And next, passing. Are our passes accurate? Are they crisp? On the outside, we use the two-handed chest pass quite a bit. To go into the low post, we like to bend and use the bounce pass to feed the big guys inside. Sometimes we go to the weak side via the skip pass. Or if we want to go behind the zone and over the top of the zone, we go with the alley-oop pass. Our pass receiver should be 15 feet away from the next player. Spacing is vital against the zone. We want to spread out and make the zone cover distances and many areas of the court. So it's very important to have spacing on the outside. The pass receiver, when he receives, should be in triple threat position in an area when he catches for that shot that is open. When he catches, he has to see the next play. If he sees an offensive play who might be open, he has to catch and make the next play as part of triple threat. And lastly, thirdly, we want to sometimes penetrate against the zone from triple threat position. Shooting. We have to do plenty of spot shooting in practice. If we're going to play a team that plays a 2-3 zone, we have to know that the day before in practice, we'll have a guard on the top of the key who's going to split that zone, that 2-3 zone. He's going to take 200 shots in practice from that spot. Our wing players, our guard and small forward, will be on those wings simulating where they'll be against that 2-3 zone the next night out. And now I'd like to go into a concept, dribbling, which is real important. And we're moving on the court now with players. We have found that we can use the dribble against the zone in two different ways. The first is to draw defenders to us and now be able to pass off. If two guys are guarding myself on defense, then I have players who are open. There's a four on three situation that develops on the other areas of the court. So dribble and draw. 
If I have two defenders on the top of the zone, I want to dribble and draw them, good. I get both to play me. Now I have passing lanes to the right if I want. I dribble and draw and now go to the left with a pass and a possible shot. Or I can also dribble and draw and possibly go through the zone, passing lane to the high post. Also, we dribble to penetrate and beat two-fifths of that zone. Try to get behind the zone, but very rarely can I go all the way from this distance and on top. So now on the dribble penetration, I use an explosive dribble and I get through the zone. Now I've beaten two-fifths of the zone, and if I've done this, if I want to leave my feet, I only leave it if I have a potential shot that can go in. So if I go up and now leave my feet, I have to have the shot, but I can also have the next pass. Again, I've beaten the zone, I pull up, I come to a jump stop, which is real important, and when I elevate, I go way up, I jump, I stay, and then I either release or make that pass upon my arrival downstairs. So beating the zone off the dribble. Now I'd like to talk, and I could have the apple, about screening the zone. So many times in a, an attack that we'll show a little later on, the BC attack, we attack the zones with first interior screens. So if the ball is on the wing here, and I'm coming over here, I'm an offensive player who screens the middle of the zone. I've got a great forward over there, Carlos Brown, who can use the screen if I set it properly. When we set screens, we again come to a jump stop, and I'll just show this in slow motion. I make myself wide, Carlos comes off, I have to watch my three seconds, so I have to spin out of the three second lane, potentially to the mid post. We'll show it again in a faster motion with me setting the interior screen on the middle of the zone, Carlos using it going baseline, but me spinning back for the potential shot or pass. So here, I set that good screen, Carlos uses it, I come to the mid post, possible dumping pass to Carlos Brown. We can also set screens on the outside of the zone. So if Chris Anderson is on the outside of the zone and Dorico White has the ball, we can set now the outside screens that result many times in jump shots. So here's the scenario, I'm a forward offensively, here's our zone, it's a 2-3 of nature. Chris Anderson is the corner player. On the pass to Shane McCravey, we can screen the outside of the zone, skip pass, potential jump shot. One more time, Dorico. Pass is made outside. I set that nice screen. Chris doesn't see me. We explode, and we get the outside shot very easily against the zone. I'd like to now show triangles against the zone, how we overload the zone with three offensive players against two. The premise of our offense is to move the ball, but get into a particular part of our zone attack where we're outnumbering the defense three against two. One is a triangle that'll form here with 15 feet spacing with myself, a mid post player, and a baseline player in the short corner. Again, two defenders. So we've moved the ball, and now I can go from here to the baseline for a shot by Carlos Brown or we can, in our triangle, hit the high post or mid post and now go to the baseline. So quick passing, find that mid post, and we go on the baseline. Or we can bring the triangle to the top. Now we're going to have a guard who's on top, a center who's at the high post, and a wing player, myself. Here is a triangle that we're trying to form against the top of a 2-3 zone. Here we can go to the high post, he can come here. We're again outnumbering the defense. Or we can go to myself in our triangle. I catch it and I hit the post right there. So the use of triangles is essential in the completion of our offense. And last but not least is attacking from the rear. This is real important in our attack, especially for our big people. Our five man, our four man will show attacking from the rear. So if I'm an offensive player and I'm our five player, what I come from behind the zone, they can't see me. That can hurt them. So surprise element from behind the zone. So I attack from the rear up the middle. I can attack by coming up here quickly, finding that gap, and coming into that particular area. Or I can play a little cat and mouse with my center. I can come this way, tap him on the shoulder, he looks that way, and he come right in there. 
So attacking from the rear is very, very important as a concept against the zone. We'll finish our concepts and principles against the zone by talking about the timing against the zone. Much of our offense is initiated with the first pass. So once we make a pass, you'll find players moving, cutting, screening for one another. We want to be in sync with the ball and our passes and people in movement. And last but not least is the rebounding, the offensive part of hitting the glass, getting that edge. Against the zone, you can rebound two on one from the weak side so effectively because they don't have man-to-man -man principles. So we try to know if a shot is going to be taken from one side of the court, we have men in position on the weak side for the possible tip and second and third shot. Or you can attack the rebounds from down the middle. So many times guards have a tough time finding offensive players, especially big guys who rebound down the middle. The first offense or continuity that we'll show is called 21. It's a 2-1-2 attack used against odd man front zones, zones of the nature of the 1-2-2, the 3-2, or the 1-3-1 zone. In our 21, we naturally, if you had a checkerboard, would gap the zone with players off the dribble and on the perimeter face 15 feet apart. So our one and two men and three and four men are outside players in this attack, 21, and our five man attacks from the rear, comes up to the high post to point the ball. Let's put our players in the natural positions in 21. The one guard will come in and draw two defenders in the one, two, two zone. Our three man is gapping the front of the zone and the back of the zone, ready for the shot, the pass, or the dribble. Our two guard is on the left side of the court gapping the zone, the first part of it, and the wing part of it. And our four man is on the opposite side in a natural gap position. We like to spread our players out, usually behind the three-point line with this spacing. Now, as our five man attacks from the rear, he comes up and points the zone for a potential pass or shot. But the zone attack 21 is initiated with a pass from one to three. Now five rolls down, potential pass and shot, or if he doesn't have it, on notice four is on the weak side. Possible rebounder if the shot is taken by three or if it goes into five. But let's say it has not gone into five. On the pass back out, five rolls out and four replaces. Notice he might be open. If it opens up, let's give it to him for the potential pass. Or if it comes out to Shane McCravey, let's say the back of the zone came up to guard our four man, we throw over the top. The five man has rolled out to that natural position for the over-the-top pass or the alley-oop pass. If neither are open, four goes out of three seconds, rolls out, we go from the perimeter, one to two, here comes five, pointing the ball, possible pass. He can go to the three man if he wants. Notice this triangle, Kevin, come back. We formed a natural triangle, 15 feet, with a guard, a center, and a forward. But if it's not there, we pass to the four man, five rolls, same action as we did on the right side, Three goes to the weak side block. Pass back out. Here comes three. There goes five. Possible or possible pass over the top. If not there, we swing the ball and we continue the attack. One to three. Let's move it a little quicker now. Back out. Here comes four. Back to two. Here comes five. There goes four. Five in a row. Three on the replace. Let's hit three. Good enough, man. Now we can also initiate 21 to the left side of the court. Let's go a little more on a game tempo or game speed to show you the rotation of our players, the movement of the ball, and how we can find the middle many times open in our attack. Okay, Dorico, two's dribbling in, he goes to four, roll by five, pass out, three replaces, guard to guard, one to three, five rolls down, four comes in the middle, he's open, we might go to the big man, or to the three man. Nice job, guys. We talked about penetration as one of our concepts off the dribble. Well, in this 
scenario, we can spread the defense and involve penetration first from our three-man. Let's show the ball going from one to three. The hard drive, he beats two-fifths of the defense. Or it can go on top. Our two-man can penetrate. He can go in hard, pull up, beats two-fifths of the defense. So that's the dribble penetration against the zone. We also talked about passing and the skip pass. Many times the zone shifts over to one side of the floor, and if we can find players on that weak side, many times they can shoot or beat defenders. Defenders have to go a long distance to close out. That means they have to go 10 to 12 feet to try to take away a shot or change a shot. This is when we can use that shot fake. Get a player rushing, get him to leave his feet, and then penetrate. So the ball is in the corner with the four man. We're gonna show the skip over to one, the shot fake, and the penetration. Or the ball here with our two man, a skip pass to the weak side, the shot fake, and penetration. Well done, guys. The second offense or continuity that we'll show is called 13. It's a 1-3-1 one, one attack against the zone that has a two-man front, whether it be a 2-3 zone or a 2-1-2 two, two zone. We attack the natural cavities in this 2-1-2 two, two zone. Notice our point guard will dribble in and draw the top of the zone to him. Our two-man is on the right wing. He's going to play between the top of the zone and the back of the zone. The three-man is on the left wing, playing between the top left side and the back left side of the zone. Our five man will come up the middle, looking to point the ball, possible pass, and four hides behind the zone, where he'll do a lot of work on the baseline in our 13 attack. On our first pass to the wing, we try to draw the back of the zone out so that Carlos Brown might open up underneath the hoop. That can happen sometimes as he hides behind the zone. If he doesn't have it going block to block, he can go to the short corner. Hold it right there. Look what happens. We're going to draw a defender out in the zone to the back side, and now we have our triangle and a three on two. Our five man goes from the mid post right down the middle, gets the ball from the four man for a possible shot. Let's bring it to the four man again, Kevin. If nothing was there, we roll five out to the weak side on the pass to two and replace the middle with three. This opens up many times a pass from two to three if the zone is caught napping on the weak side. If the ball is in the two person's hand and the back of the zone comes with the three man, we can once again throw over the top like we did in 21 to our five man and the potential shot. Now we're gonna move the ball from one side of the court to the other. Ball reversal is important. As it goes from two to one, five comes up the middle, three rolls out to his natural spot. We go to the wing, four goes on the baseline, short corner. Five rolls down, ball comes out. Our two man had gone to the weak side block. He may be open for the potential pass and shot. Now let's try to run it one time full speed where we start on the right side and go from the right side to the left side. Notice our opposite wing man goes to the weak side block for rebounding if the ball is shot from the opposite side. Let's go full speed chain. One to two, to four, short corner, five rolls down, three replaces, five comes up the middle, three goes to the wing, four is on that baseline, short corner, four comes out, the Rico White is open, and we have a possible shot or play inside. That is very, very important. Let's talk about also the use of the high post, which is important. When we initiated this offense, or whenever the five man can come up, he's a major target in this offense. If he receives, many times he has the shot, or the next pass leads to an open direct shot. If he comes up the middle and receives from one, he's many times open for the shot or the pass. But look what happens if the ball is back out in the one man's hand. If the back of the zone comes up with our five man, the alley-oop over the top pass is there for Carlos Brown many, many times. Now we're going to go full speed by initiating 13 to the left side of the court. 
Now we're going to just bring the four man from the block to the short corner, and it's the same attack with the same continuity, and it really fills spots. We get open shots, we get the ball into the low post, we get the ball into the middle, that cavity, and we sometimes take the outside shot or penetrate. Okay, 13 to the left, one to three, to four, full speed, ball's reversed, five's in the middle, two's on the wing, four's coming to the short corner, here comes Mike in the middle. Nice job against the zone. Now we want to talk about penetration. Let's say Shane is outside. We talked about beating the zone off the dribble. Well, we can beat it from the wings very easily with penetration. So let's dribble in and now have Dorico White, okay, beat the zone from the right side. Boom. Good enough. Let's bring it out and let's have Mike Benane beat the zone from the left wing. Pass is made, dribble penetration, and we're gone. Good enough. Now let's talk, if we could, about skip passes. Let's say the ball is in the short corner, left-hand side, Carlos Brown has it. If the zone shifts over in our 13 attack, we look to the weak side where somebody like the Rico White, our two-man, might be open. Again, if we get the skip pass, take the shot if it's there. If a man's rushing out to you, show him the ball, show him the shot fake, and beat him off the dribble. Now we'll have a skip pass from four to two. It comes out, there's the shot fake, boom. We beat the defense with the dribble. Or, Dorico White could have it on that right wing, and we can skip it over to the three man. Skip pass, shot fake, and dribble in. Good job, men, in our 13 attack. Way to finish. Our third attack is called BC. It's gotten from a great high school coach many years back in South Carolina, George Beam, coached at Brooklyn Casey, therefore the name BC. It's a great attack to get the ball inside, to attack on the baseline to the low block, to get the ball to the mid post, and to also flashing players right into the paint of the zone. We started by describing the roles of our players in BC. Our point guard looks to initiate, and now we'll go BC right, by drawing a wing player to guard him in his role against the zone. It initiates on the dribble, then the pass. Our two-man is a shooter. He'll play corner to corner, looking for open jump shot opportunities, or really looking for inside passes that many times occur from the corner into the low post. Our three-man starts on the elbow, right side of the court, as we face the hoop. And he and four, who start opposite, are very interchangeable. They have the same roles as we go from one side of the court to the other in ball reversal. And our five-man, our center, will start on the ball side block. He is a screener in this particular offense, but also a man who spins back after screens, points the ball, gets the ball for shots, or the next pass, from the mid-post area. We'll show it first against the 1-2-2 zone where our point guard has drawn the two-man to him. On the pass from 1-2 to two, offensively, the back of the 1-2-2 has to come out. We screen across with five screening the back of the zone. Here comes four on the baseline for the possible pass and score. Let's again begin it outside and show on the pass from 1-2 to two, how five screens across the lane, and if four is not open, he might be open when he spins back to the ball after setting that good solid screen. Okay, it initiates one to two on the pass. The screen is made on the pass. Here's the spin back. Notice again, Kevin Glover did a good job. The ball's in the corner of pointing the ball. He's big and wide. He spun back to the mid post, which might open up in this cavity of the zone. He points the ball very well in our attack against a one, two, two. Now let's show a one, three, one zone. Ball is outside. Now the configuration of the zone is one, three, one. On the pass from one to two, we draw the back man of the one, three out to guard two in the corner. If he doesn't come out, two takes that open shot. But now we up screen and screen the middle man in the one, three, one zone. So the ball is initiated with a pass from one to two. We screen up, and four goes baseline for potential scoring opportunities. 
Notice three always vacates to the weak side. If there's a shot on the strong side, there's our weak side three man ready for opportunities for the offensive bounce on the weak side. And the last zone we'll show is the 2-1-2 two -two zone. Who do we screen in that particular zone? We hope again, now in the 2-1-2, two -two, to bring the ball to the front of the zone right here. Now, on the pass to the corner, the back of the zone comes out, and we screen the middleman of the zone. There's the screen, there's four baseline, and five to the mid post. Let's get the ball back in the corner. You know, when the ball is in the corner, all zones become 2-3. Every zone becomes that type of configuration when the ball is in the corner. So there's always usually a man on the ball. This has formed a 2-3, even though it's again 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-2-2. One, two, two. We have a middleman taking away, hopefully, a low player. The zone has a weak side player here, and the guards come in a little tight. Now, how do we continue BC? We continue it with a pass out from two to one. On this pass, four X's out to the elbow, five down screens, and three comes right into this natural cavity that seems to open up a lot for us. Let's get the ball one more time back to two, and notice he'll go corner to corner after his screen. So a pass from two to one, four X's up, five screens down, and three comes into the middle. If three is not open, to continue this zone, five goes to the left block, three comes out of three seconds. We pass from one to four on the perimeter. Now we have our two man located, left side corner, five has gone to the left side block, and three is here. It continues with the same type action on the pass to two. Four goes to two on the pass, four vacates, five screens across, three uses it, and four, five spins back to the mid post. So we are in the same basic offense. Again, bring it out to Carlos Brown. The four man is going to throw two, two. Five's going to screen across, but now get three. Beautiful. And spin back here to the ball. Beautiful. To continue the offense. Let's get in the corner. Now let's say nothing is there. We have not hit the low post or the five man in the mid post. To continue this offense, we have on the pass out, two to one, three X's out. Five screens down, and four comes into the middle of the zone for the potential shot. Good job, Ben. That starts the BC to the right side. Let's bring the defense off and show it full speed against any type of zone. I think it's very important that players, after a couple of days of dummying this offense, it becomes second nature. They can fall out of bed, and they'll be running the BC perfectly, but just give us two or three days of practice, and it'll work. So we'll initiate to the right side off the dribble. One will go to two, five screens, the appropriate player. Ball is out, we X out, we screen, a good, pass, screen across, good. Spin back, pass, X out, and Carlos Brown's in the middle. Good job, men. Now let's bring it to the left side of the court. So if we want to go right, all the players have to know that two starts right, five starts right, and four starts opposite. Now we're going to show it BC left. You have to call it maybe in your huddle. The point guard has to have a verbal or possible uh, sign out there with his fingers or a fist or so. But now this is BC to the left side. Let's go slowly at first, men. Now we initiate one to two, five screens, spins back. Passes out, four X's out, there's three. Not there, pass to four, pass to two. Screen across, spin back, pass out. One more time, and Carlos gets in the middle. Okay, last time, BC left full speed. We're playing a great zone, men. This is the time we have to execute. Remember, we want to draw fouls. We want to keep those big guys happy. We want to get it inside. We've missed a couple of shots from the outside. Now's the time to get some three-point plays in the interior. BC left. One to two, five screens for four. Three comes up, he may be open. We swing. Good screen, five. Good play three. Here comes four. He's our big man. He's the guy. He got fouled. He scored. And now we've come back. We've rallied. That is BC first to the right, then to the left. 
great interior screening offense. We get the ball inside by using this attack. The next attack will show gets you the highest percentage shots you can get in.